Hey, Brave Masters, welcome to our next episode, special episode of the Brave Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm so excited to have our guest today. I uh, just wanted to bring you this series of in interviews that's all about where are they now. So our guest today, Kim Flynn, hi, how are you? Good, thrilled to be here, thank you. Yes, you're so welcome. Uh, Kim was with us in the first year that we launched this podcast, and so what we're doing this month is celebrating our third year anniversary on air, and I am so excited to have this conversation uh, with Kim. I've known her for quite a few years, clearly, and, uh, and she's gotten you know bigger and better, and all kinds of things are happening in her world. So Kim, please introduce yourself. Give, give the audience a little sense of what you're doing and what your company's all about. Awesome. Well, first I have to say kudos to Jenna for surviving three years on there. That's a big deal. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Three years in survival. Yes. Yeah. So um, I own what's called E-Simplified. It's a training company for entrepreneurs and we specialize in systems and processes training. So like whatever is sexy and exciting in business, we don't do that. We do like really the boring stuff. <laughs> so we do. But necessary. Yes. Right. I like to, I like to um, use the analogy of a tree, right? So marketing and um branding even like really sexy fun stuff like you do that's the tree that's the tree above the ground we do the root system below the ground yeah. um, and it's such it's such unsexy territory that there are very few coaches and mentors that play in systems and processes uh, yeah. so we've been able to grow really really quickly and it's exciting doing big things yeah, you really are. And, uh, you know, clearly I'm, I love creative and art and the sexy part. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, that's what I think you and I connect on is that I totally see the value and, and, and try to stress to my clients and, and anyone that I'm in front of that the nuts and bolts of the, of the, of the systems and the foundation is what's going to make you sustain. Yes. So, you know, and I totally respect, you know, what you teach and, and how you truly help people, you know, get that information because Thank you. And it, it takes both. Like yeah. if you just had a root system, you wouldn't have a tree, you wouldn't have fruit, you wouldn't have any money coming in, right? You'd be dead in the water. So you can't have one without the other. You need both. Yeah. yeah. So good. So uh so very good. I really want to say um or look at with you, where were you just a couple years ago? Number one, you were Kim Flynn dot com. Uh -huh. so start there, but just give people kind of the background in case they are new to you. What, uh, where were you three years ago, approximately? Uh, we were remember? consulting. I was on the road like crazy. We yeah. were doing events in 47 cities, which was exhausting. I was self-branded. I was loving it, loving working with the clients. Um, I don't think I was still working with clients at that point, but I was definitely training a ton. Right. Um, and a little bit burning out. And I saw the wall coming in front of me, the wall of how can I grow when I'm self-branded? Uh, how can I grow when it's dependent on me? And I see this so much with clients, whether you're a plumber or architect or lawyer or doctor, whatever, like if your business is about you, you will hit a wall where you're like, okay, I can't grow anymore. Uh, if, if it's about me, right? So then we have to um, do a big, a big switch. And we did a massive change. It took about 10 months to plan this change. This was not like a, oh, let's change your name. I told people we rebranded and they're like, oh, your new logo is cute. That probably took you 10 minutes, right? <laughs> no. It's so simple. <laughs> 10, months, 10 months of grueling work as we yeah. shift everything away from it being about me and, and for it to be about the company. And what's so great is when you can do that, uh, first of all, the biggest challenge in doing that is having to trust people and saying, it's not about me. The people are not trying to buy me. Other people can fulfill and can train and can do whatever it is that you do even better than you. And that's hard to admit for ego. Uh, yeah. But once you can find those people, set them up into your system and let them run, like the sky's the limit. All of a sudden your business does not have an end point in sight, which it very much does if it's just about you. Yeah, you know, and uh, and I'm really glad you brought that up because, uh, and I think there's a place in, you know, the right strategy about branding for you, especially maybe if, at sure. the beginning. I did. Brand with Jenna was where I, I, I started and then I just recently rebranded a Brave Masters, which yes. doesn't have me in it. Yes. Um, so it can grow, uh, even though I'm still a big part of the face of it, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, I think the key thing you said was systems. So I know you're about systems, but I think people don't systemize early enough 
to even see the opportunity that they can delegate or let go or give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I did, how, how did, I mean, like I said, I know you're about systems. So did you do that from the get go when you started your business from the very beginning or was that a process as well? And part of the 10 month process? Yeah. So I've always been a systems girl and I've always yeah. been able to systematize the things that I don't do. I've always had those systematized, but even knowing I'm a systems girl, this is how hard it was. Um, the first time someone trained at an event and I think, Oh, like they're paying to see me. Right. That kind of thing. Yeah, the yeah. first time I had someone training at the event. I like kind of lost it at the back of the room. Like I wasn't like crying or yelling, but I was freaking out. And then I talked to the trainer when they got off the stage, keep in mind, this is their very first time doing it on their own. I like lit into them with all the things they were doing wrong and they need to take charge and they need to, and it was just all of my junk and all my control issues coming out. Um, Yep. Through that. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you do have it systematized, there's a big piece of just um, emotionally letting go and trusting. Yeah. Um, and, and not just trusting, but... Um, uh, Empowering, right? Yes, right. Empowering but them. From I'm scared of my employee taking over to this is my new role. I get to help them take over and, it, and, and I get to be a mentor for them. It's a, it's a big change. Yeah, yeah. I... I agree. I, and I've watched, um, uh, actually I have a close friend that's going through that process too. And she's bringing on coaches and trainers and, and we're, you know, we're, um, we're, I'm working with her on that, but it's so crazy to see, um, you know, it's like you're, cause you're so close to it. It's your knowledge that you're, you've been selling for all that time and for someone else to kind of take their own spin on it yet, try to keep them in line and uh, with your, you know, methods. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it, I can definitely see the let go. And so, oh, oh, with, go ahead. oh yeah, no, continue. I always like to ask myself why, like the, the pattern yeah. is I hold on, like, why am I so anxious about that? And it all, it all goes back to ego. If I am getting my value from, I'm in the front of the room, therefore that's my value. And yes. if that's taken away from me, then you kind of feel like lost and confused. Well, where's my value then? Also, if someone comes in and trains better than you do, or, you know, writes the contracts better than you do, or mows the lawn better than you do, whatever it is that is, uh, you can be very threatened by that, by a, like a deep fundamental, who am I kind of feeling? Well, if I'm, if I'm not the best at that, then who am I? Why am I, why am I here? You know, that kind of thing. So yeah. There's some transition time for your psyche as well. Yeah, that is, that's really powerful that you said that. And, and I've, I've experienced that myself and I, mm -hmm. I think you're right on that. You've got to ask the right questions of yourself mm -hmm. in order to grow. Right. right. It's like we hold ourselves back if we don't, if we think it's only got to be this way or it can only be you at the front of the room, then guess what? You're going to, you know, tap, tap out. Right. And, and, and certainly hit the ceiling. And, and I love that question. It's like, you know, it's why do, why, why do I, why do I have to have it this way? Yeah. Um, and the value is huge. The conversation around value. I actually had that conversation with myself about again, <laughs> I've had it a couple of times, but this last December, yeah. It's like, what am I really after here? And, yeah. you know, and I don't know, have you ever experienced where you take on personally the, the results of your clients because that's where you hold value or have oh, you? When you're working as a coach, it's really uh -huh. easy to do that. Yeah. Like if they see success, you feel good about yourself. If they are, if they're struggling, then you're like, Oh, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the what case. did I not do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I see that happen in the industry as well. Mm -hmm. So, well, I want to dive into like the story, the journey that you have been on. Yes, that one. Um, because I have just totally watched you go from, you know, the Kim Flynn world to now e simplified. So, tell us a little bit more about the 10 month journey, if you want, or just really what's transpired over these last couple of years. Um, so I read a quote, uh, Tim Ferriss has these really good books out right now. Like what do they call master mentors, tribe of mentors, something like that. Yeah. They're like a Bible for entrepreneurs. So if you haven't checked those books out, read them. They're fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the quotes, he interviews a bunch of people in those books. And one of the quotes that he interviewed, I can't remember who it was, but he said, uh, the person said, who's a, a a very successful business owner. And he said, every time you triple revenue, you will have to rethink 
everything in your business. And wow. I found that to be true. Everything, how your leads come in, how your sales team works, how your processes are built, how you fulfill. Like just imagine every three times you triple wiping the slate clean and rebuilding. And that's what happens when you go through rapid growth. So whenever anyone is like, congratulations, you've been growing like crazy. And I'm like, yeah, you know what that means, don't you? <laughs> I started over. I can tell every third time. <laughs> so, um, I'm having a breakdown. Break yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't congratulate people when they're going through rapid growth. Like, uh, like slow yeah. measured growth sounds much uh, more fun, but uh, rapid growth has been my experience. So, yes. Um, right. Uh, I was watching Notting Hill the other day and, it, and there's this quote that I thought of when I'm about to launch into my story. Um, and the, have you seen, do you remember Notting Hill? Yeah, with the, <laughs> Julia Roberts? Yes! yes love it. Well, the crazy roommate says, I, right at the beginning, he says, I have a story that will shrink your balls to the size of walnuts or the size of raisins or something like that, I can't remember. So here's my story that will shrink your balls. Ready, set, go. <laughs> All right, so this is a couple of years ago. We were going through one of those big, big dips, right? And we call them S curves. You have to go down before you can go up. And so yeah. we were going down into the pit and it looked like rebuilding everything. And for us, our, our marketing that we used to do was no longer converting. Uh, marketing, as you know, has to be updated every several years or the method burns out, right? Yeah. And so we didn't upgrade our marketing in a while and um, our sales team wasn't able to convert the leads we had coming in. Just like everything just stopped working and we were like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? Um, so wow. we kept trying to try new things, try new things, try new things. And keep in mind, we're burning out. You know, my company is big and we spend uh, in, this, in the six figures every single month to just in expenses to keep this business right. alive. And if you're not bringing money in, that gets expensive really quickly, really quickly. And yeah, so we went into this like, Ooh, you know, that kind of piece right there. And this was my big lesson. I did not call it fast enough. I kept telling my management team, we're going to try this. We're going to turn this around. We're going to try this. We're going to turn this around. And it got to be four months, five months, six months of us just bleeding out, trying to figure it out before I called it and said, we have to radically drop expenses. And I mean radically drop expenses. If I had pulled that lever down on month one, month two, golden, awesome. It would have been great, right? Mm, yeah. I out for four or five, I think it was up to six months before I finally said, we've got to call it, right? And so um, that was a huge, I'm, I mean, like, take me down to my knees experience. Yeah. Um, I had to admit to all of my team members that I was crap. You know, <laughs> that I hadn't been leading the company well because I had, I'd been living on hopium, right? Like, oh, yes. this month, this next month, right? And I didn't drop expenses fast enough. Um, and I was so Got scared it. of having to face the music, um, at, which is all ego and pride, right? I didn't face the music fast enough and I didn't take action fast enough. And so when I finally did take action, um, it was a really cool moment. And I watched as all my team members kind of gathered around the, the campfire and like, committed to make it work, to turn things around, to cut costs wherever they possibly could. So Jenna, keep in mind that we, we run this company on, you know, well into the six figures per month on expenses. Right. We dropped our expenses by 40%. Wow. Like, like cut in half, cut in half. Wow. And here's how we did it. We didn't say, okay, we are going to take our most, you know, our fluffy expenses that we don't absolutely need. And we're just going to cut back those 10 expenses. That's not what we did. What we did is we said, what would we need to do bare minimum to keep the lights on? And we cut everything else and then built up from there. So instead of taking from the top and cutting down 10%, you came at up. the bottom and built up the top 10%. And I said, okay, we can cover that. What else can we do? Okay, we can cover the next 10%, the next 10%, the next 10%. And that's all we can cover to get to break even. And wow. we had to do a large chunk of layoffs. And that's one of the hard things about being a business owner. That's the first time I've ever in my career had to do layoffs. Um, we fired lots of people. I've never had to do layoffs. And wow. Cut back an entire department, um, laid off anyone we possibly could, and um, kind of just all gathered the, what's the, gathered the wagons? I don't know. Yeah. Buckled down and yeah. turned things around. Um, wow. Uh, and that was a brutal year. And then by the end of the year, um, we'd figured it out. We got our systems in place. We were actually cash positive by the end of the year, which if you could have seen our numbers was a miracle. It was a miracle. 
<laughs> Got it. I totally believe you. So, <laughs> it's crazy. You know what? After going through that experience, though, um, I'm so grateful I did. Uh, so I can identify so much more with, uh, with clients who are really are bleeding out. And I can yeah. say, I've been there. I know what that looks like. Here's what you do. Um, and so yeah. that, that was my story. That was the hardest. I, you know, I, I mean, it's so good because I mean, I, my first business, I ended up in bankruptcy, right? And, and congratulations, it, <laughs> congratulations. Exactly. And, and had I known what, I mean, it's like, you don't know what you don't know until you really move through it and experience it in some way, or you can, you have someone that's been there like yourself or myself, where we can say, don't do that. Like we did. Don't do that. <laughs> yes. Don't do that. And, and yet it, it, it does happen to be the blessing. You know, it's like, if you can survive it. And of course I didn't keep the business, but it turned me into an entrepreneur for life. Yeah you know, and that's a whole different, you know, conversation and, and I'm still here. And, and it's great that you are able to salvage the business, meaning, you know, just keep it alive and keep it bare minimum and build again. And it's like, I think that is the, the true testament of a brave master. First of all, <laughs> is to do these things that just require the, the heart and the soul of you getting to the ultimate vision, even if it's really hard to do. It's really action. hard. Yeah. So one of the hardest parts is having to admit to yourself, this isn't working. Yes. I don't know what I'm doing. Like just admitting that to yourself and to the team, that yeah. was the challenge. That was a true challenge. Yeah. Um, so that did any of those people come back? I'm just curious. The, the people we laid off or? Yeah. Did you bring any of them back? Uh, no, we actually discontinued that entire division. Oh, got it. it working. So yeah. here's the exciting thing. Because of the transparency, because of just like, you guys, I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm failing you as a leader and just, you know, authentic transparency. I didn't lose a single person that we didn't lay off. No one quit. Not a single person quit. Yeah. So to be able to tell your entire team we're really, really struggling and, you know, let's get to this together, but there's no promises. Like we're really struggling. And to be able to have every single one of your team members there through that journey. So good. So powerful. So yeah. 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 I think you're, you're right on. It's the, you know, it's like, I think this is the conversation about vulnerability and transparency and you, and, and I started watching your recent unplugged moments, right? Your oh, yeah. raw videos and, yeah. and you were talking about that. And uh, I believe, you know, the vulnerability that it's going to require for you to, to show it all up. Right. Yeah. And, and yet it's like, we want to hide that from the closest people, which is our team or families or, or what have you yet. They're the ones that are so committed and invested in the first place. Mm -hmm. Clients may come and go, maybe, I don't know, but I think it's the thread that brings us together. I think it's the threat. It's the, in the, the, the leadership is truly inside of you being able to, to own it. Isn't yeah. that the crazy thing? We're trying so hard to have people like us or respect us or whatever that is for you. And so we put up this, uh, this, just this mask and the ultimate irony is people like you and respect you when you take off the mask. I mean, it's crazy. It's so Absolutely. counterintuitive, but that's exactly yeah. what the secret is. You know? It is the secret. Yeah. It is the absolute miracle drug right there yes. <laughs> is to take the mask off, which is what this whole show is about. I'm really trying to unfold the mask because mm -hmm. I don't want people to walk away and, and think, oh, well, they can do that. I can't, you know, it's like, no, if we can do it, you can. This yeah. is the whole point. And, and so once you started rebuilding, like obviously you got the layoffs done and all of that, mm -hmm. what was your first step? What was my first step? Uh, we just needed to overhaul everything. The sales floor was so messy. Um, I can't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> so it was truth. just literally like it just a lot of, It was just a lot of hard work, but we cut expenses yeah. drastically and worked really hard, cut all the fluff and, and just started rebuilding. That's good. So, yeah. What did you, was there a react? Did you notice a reaction to that from the marketplace? Uh, meaning clients or whatever else? Yeah. Not really. Um, mm, no, we just had to get our ducks in a row is what needed yeah. to happen. So yes. right when I went through that though, I was going through health stuff as well. So in the mm. last three years, I, um, let me tell you another story too. Here's my other story. <laughs> We're into stories, right? Keep going. <laughs> so I went to the doctor, this was probably four or five years ago. I went to the doctor and I get my blood work done every year. And my doctor said, mm, your numbers are starting to get high on insulin levels. And mm. I was like, yeah, I'm healthy. I'm just going to ignore that advice. Right. And then the next year I came back to get my numbers done again. And, and my doctor was like, yeah, your insulin levels are up still. You might want to start eating better. And I was like, okay. And I'm like eating Cheetos girl. Never. <laughs> 
me what's going on my mouth. <laughs> Vegetables is like a bad word, you know? So I just it's eat whatever. a bad word for me too. <laughs> right. And so I like ate, you know, some asparagus that week and I was like, yeah, I'm good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just once. I'm good. And then we went into year three and I got my insulin levels again. And my doctor said to me, you are pre-diabetic. You've caused damage to your liver, kidney, I can't remember what it is, liver probably. Like you will have full-blown diabetes in five to 10 years if you do not change your eating habits. Wow. I know. And then all of a sudden life comes a calling, right? And it's yeah. just the exact same thing as my business. I can ignore, 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 but eventually it catches up to you and you it have to say, up. it's time to make a change. That's so much wow. what I thought in my business. I knew those numbers were catching up to me, you know, and I chose, yeah. to, ignore, chose to ignore, oh, it'll, be, it'll fix itself. I'll, you know, cut my expenses here by 5%, you know, that kind of thing. But when, when, when your business demands that you make a change, you can listen to it now or you can listen to it later. But it yeah, it's kind of the whisper or the two by four. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, and I, and I'm assuming you've got that under. I did. I changed uh, my diet drastically. Um, vegetables is actually something I like order on a menu, which is not what <laughs> I used to do. <laughs> I'm with you, girl. We sub out fries every meal for vegetables. It's good. It's nice. Good. Yeah. 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 This year I'm putting that health on focus. I'm actually down 20 pounds and I'm like, Congratulations. Time, to, time to like shift. I'm like, we're not getting younger here. <laughs> Congratulations. So yeah. Congrats to you. That's great. And we want you here long term, right? So I get it. And diabetes runs in my family. So I'm real, real clear. No yeah. yeah. It's no joke. It's just no joke. So yeah, so uh, you know, so you've got health, you've got the business health, mm -hmm. all right, or the lack of health in the business, and uh, and so tell us the exciting transition mm -hmm. to where you are today, which is e-simplified. But what was that process like, and what um, I guess just some of the decisions or the exciting turnaround that you had as part yeah. of yeah. So this is uh, in the last two years. So when we pulled out of that S curve, right? Yeah. Um, it always seems like the really cool things happen as soon as you come out of that S curve. When you go down, you struggle, you die, and then you come back out and then <laughs> things take off, right? Yeah. So in the past two years, we brought on a business partner. I brought on a business partner. It's someone I've known for a little while. He was a trainer on my team. And uh, I talk about the tree, right? I am a root system. I can build processes. I can make things strong. He is my business development guy. Like he just shoots us straight up. So um, I brought him on as a business partner, which is the first time I brought on a partner in this company. Mm -hmm. And it has been so cool to see that tree just shoot up. So um, we've changed a lot. We're growing like crazy. Uh, we're buying our own building, which is kind of cool. That is so, cool. I, I know. know. Buying a building about 30,000 square feet, which is a little bit hard to, to chew on, as I, but I'm having fun decorating it. So <laughs> not complaining. <laughs> You're like, screw the roots. I'm going to decorate. Yes. I'm all about the decorating. So no, it's been, it's been really cool. We have, um, oh man, just lots of things I can't tell you about going on in the fire. <laughs> That we're kind of in the background that I can't announce yet, but yeah, cool things, and it's been just this uh, I don't know, almost like miracle level of, yeah. of how fast after we pulled out, how quickly we've gone up. Yeah, you know, I, I, um, I mean, I am so excited, I and I appreciate that. I didn't realize you had kind of the, the S curve going on, oh, yes, right? Yes. So it's great to, um, to even me, you know, between you and I to know that and just mm -hmm. to know that you know, you did what you had to do and you're still here and you're still kicking and, and, and better because of it. So I congratulate you on that. And, and I am, I'm just so excited. I know I got to, you know, you invited me to be a part of, you know, a trainer in one of your programs and I was blessed to be able to do that. So that was amazing. And, um, and you're just, it's just really taking a new, uh, what is it called? I mean, I just feel like it's like this breath of fresh air. Mm. of where you are going and yeah. I know what's your goal this year I think you announced your goal for this year what's your goal this year yeah it's 10 million this year oh, and we want to get to 30 million by 2020 oh um, wow another growth a plan to get there which is and it's one thing to just throw out a high number and say woohoo that'll be fun it's another thing when you have plan in place of what what chapters you need to open, what you do here, here, and here to actually get those numbers. So yeah, duplication, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have to brag on you. Jenna uh, mentioned the, um, 
uh, the course that you'd filmed. So um, yeah. she did one of our MBO courses. MBO is Masters of Business Ownership. It's a year long like training program, kind of like a college experience for entrepreneurs. And you filmed that course. It's a four month course and our clients freaking love your course. So that's so cool. Value. We get lots of good reviews on your course. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, that, that makes my heart sing. I just, you know, I don't necessarily get the feedback. A few people have reached out and, and, um, and literally I could count like on my hand, right? And I love your, you know, love what you're teaching. I'm like on this part of it or something. Uh -huh. talking about the it factor, <laughs> whatever it is. So yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And um, always a, a, a great thing to play with you and your company and your team and just uh, to make things better for entrepreneurs. So okay. I am just, thank you again for being here. Thank you again to be a part of the show and you are true example of what's possible in just a few years. And, mm -hmm. and, and it must've been right after we talked when your S curve, I yes, will just call it, it S curve. <laughs> that was S -curve. The <laughs> yeah, that was like, Oh, we had that conversation and then it went downhill, but, yeah. um, it's the Hills that make the ride. Right. And so, and the roller coaster happened. So I, uh, certainly only wish you up from here and I know you are absolutely strong enough to handle any other S curves. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't have it any other way. There's no way yeah. to make it all up. Like I, I say, bring on the S curves. Yeah. Bring, bring it. <laughs> yeah. That's when the, you know, the, what's that, the, the G force kicks in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Going around the curve. So share with us, uh, first of all, your name's changed, your website's changed. What is the best place for people to connect with you and your company? Check out esimplifiedtraining.com. So that's our main website. Uh, you can also find us on social, obviously. And uh, what we'd love to invite people to do is come to a three-day business intensive retreat. We host them almost every single week in our offices in Provo, Utah and Phoenix, Arizona. And so you can pick your, pick your poison. I'm usually in Provo. I was in Phoenix yesterday, but or last week, but I, I haven't been there and I probably am down there quarterly if that. So if you want to come meet me, come to Provo. If you don't care about meeting me, don't blame you. Go to Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the same content is trained both places. And that's usually awesome. the starting point to join our MBO program. People ask us, can I just join the MBO program? And we're like, no, we kind of need to vet each other and make sure that you're not crazy. And then you talked us. <laughs> <laughs> so well, your MBO is a commitment, right? Yes, is a long, a year -long program. So come to two and a half days, check us out, make sure we're a fit. Um, and then we, we play in the MBO program. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, I love that. And I'll have to check that out my, myself. I just want to be able to be in your space. Yeah, yeah you need to come. How are like, you where's coming? my invitation? <laughs> I'm writing this down right now. Um, people are going to call you today and you're going to come to the... Uh, I would love to check out, yeah, dates awesome. and times and see when that is. So, awesome. yeah, awesome. awesome. Very cool. Well, I'm always blessed to have you on the show and just uh, yeah. to be in your space. Thank you so much for your transparency and your story and I am totally thrilled about where you're headed and I know you'll hit your goals because that's who you are and uh, and I can't wait to share this with uh, our world at large here so I'm um, just really glad you're here thank you Jen that means the world to me thank you yeah you're so welcome and I just have to a little side note yeah. is I was watching you decorate your house on Facebook <laughs> your offices and yeah. you and I have like the total same style. Nice. Nice. You mean like, you have great style, my right? colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, anyway, it's a, it's a fun fact. Um, but uh, just really thrilled and uh, happy for you. And I'm glad your health is okay and going in the right direction. Thank you. And your kids are all growing like weeds, <laughs> like mine as well. And uh, it's just been really great to watch. So everybody watching, please make sure that you connect with uh, Kim and her company at E Simplified Training. Training or trainings? training training.com all right great we'll make sure that link is in the show notes as well and uh and just join her she's offering a huge value of of training with this workshop that she offers so make sure you take advantage of that and uh and we will see you on our next episode thank you everyone let's go get our brave on thanks jenna yes you're welcome